good afternoon everyone i think i don't know what to say because all my views are all known to you but i'll just uh, make this really short i have 20 minutes to present before you and you know on and off uh, we keep on talking large cap mein invest kare mid cap mein invest kare momentum invest kare loss mein kare profit mein kare ultimately there are a few things at least in my career which i have learned by making a lot of losses and a lot of mistakes which have contributed to sustainable wealth creation and i think the idea of my short presentation would be just to share the same with you so without taking too much time first is this is a synopsis of what has worked for us over the last so many years so one is obviously you know one has to stick to an investment philosophy different fund managers different investors would have different philosophies some would uh, you know focus on some ratios some would focus on some other ratios some would only focus on growth some would only focus on 10 years down the line and so on and so forth i think as an investor one has to be clear what investment philosophy he or she understands and should follow that with conviction so first you have to build a conviction that this is the investment philosophy which i believe is going to work and then you have to stick with that investment philosophy if you keep on changing your investment philosophy depending on the time of the day what is working what is not working i think you will make a mess of it because ultimately you will end up buying at the wrong time and selling at the wrong time i think second very clearly is uh, at least we believe in fundamentals you know i always say this movies are all about entertainment entertainment and entertainment the same way returns in a portfolio are all about profits profits and profits of the underlying company and therefore our view has always been that focus on fundamentals do your due diligence properly at the portfolio level returns are a combination of two things your winners and the less the losers the better i think many times we just focus on picking up the good stocks we don't focus on the fact that if you have five good stocks and five equally bad stocks you will end up making nothing so this due diligence and focusing on fundamentals ensures that you reduce the number of losers and even if you have some losers they will not be big losers and therefore they will not negatively impact uh, the returns which your winners will contribute third is uh, you know i always say this the best company is not necessarily the best stock there is uh, always this uh, concept that if the company is good you buy at any price you know we don't believe in that concept of buy at any price we do believe that the best company is not necessarily the best stock if it is priced beyond perfection i always give this example of uh, you know the best paint company in the country you know great brand great company but trades at 60 70 80 p a multiple and grows at 10 11% last 10 years the kagar growth has been 10 11% so unlike the perception that it is growing at 20 25% i think the fact is that the company has grown at 10 11% and therefore it's a great company but not necessarily a great stock a good stock is a good company which is available at a valuation which is going to give you returns see ultimately you are going to create a portfolio abhi portfolio mein bahut acche naam hai lekin return nahi banta hai so what is that use of that portfolio ultimately we are all here to generate returns right or no so we have to ensure that we buy companies which are also good stocks we have to have a buy and hold strategy what is buying equity buying equity is becoming a partner in the company you know if you have a 1% stake 1% equity holding you are 1% partner if you have 5% stake your 5% partner if you have 100 shares you are a partner in the company you will become a partner in the company only if you believe that that money which you are investing is going to give you return from a longer term perspective and therefore do your research before you buy your company or before you buy a stock don't do research after you have bought it because if you have bought it unless things change yes you have to have a dynamic thing but that dynamism shouldn't change every day so unless fundamentals change i think you have to be wedded to the company so a minimum 3 4 5 year view is only going to create wealth for you obviously you know it is very easy to say but undervalued stocks is what you should be buying now how do you 
determine whether a stock is undervalued or not. For that, we'll have to have a one-week session, not a 20-minute session. But the fact of the matter is that the idea is that you buy something where, according to your analysis, the value is much higher than what you're paying today. That is how we'll make money. Because if you get a lot of money in 12 or 8, then it will be a benefit. If you get a lot of money in 2 or 3 or 3, then it will be a benefit. So it is not going to lead to returns for you. So I think this whole concept of analysis on a fundamental basis is trying to see where there is mispricing. And if you find something where according to your analysis, the stock is undervalued, I think that is where you have to get in. You also have to find companies which have the capability of reinvesting what they are making. Because that is how the law of compounding will work. You know, we all talk about uh, 20 bagger, 100 bagger, 50 bagger, you know, even the fund I used to manage at Reliance became 100x in 21 years. But that was a CAGR of only 21-22%. But over a period of time, it looks like a 100x, 50x. I think that 50x, 100x, even in companies can happen only if you have a management which has the capability of reinvesting the profit which they are making at an equally attractive uh, return on capital employed. And I think that is how companies can generate returns. Obviously, you have to have a diversification. You know, we might like X sector the best. Right now, the flavor of uh, the season is defense, railways, EMS. You can't put 100% of your capital here because something might happen to the sector. So I think the law of sustainable wealth creation is diversification. You have to have diversified. The diversification should be across companies. If you're only investing in funds, don't put 100% in a backers or 100% in some other fund. Even there, you have to have some diversification. Don't over diversify because then you'll have the whole market. But you have to have diversification. And you have to invest in companies which are up there compared to others in terms of the quality. Now, quality of the management is not necessarily a Harvard educated or a Stanford educated management. It is discipline as far as capital employed. So whether there is free cash flow, whether the return on capital employed is 14, 15, 17, 18 percent, I think that is a true assessment of whether the management is quality or not. These are some of the synopsis. I think there is a lot of talk, large cap, mid cap, small cap. The good thing is that, you know, India is a country of entrepreneurship. I have always had the view that India grows because of entrepreneurs and despite the government. And the last so many years, we have seen so many companies, so many sectors come up from really, really very small uh, size to really large size. And you know, on and off, we talk, uh, abhi mid cap ka jamana khatam, abhi small cap ka jamana khatam, abhi large cap, abhi mid cap. I think the fact of the matter is that in a growing economy, which India is, there will always be entrepreneur driven companies, smaller companies, which have a path of growing faster. We are lucky, we have great large cap companies and you should definitely invest in large caps also. But if you have the stomach to withstand volatility and have the period of four or five years of investment, time and again it has been proven that the smaller companies end up giving you higher returns. And you know, these charts are very clearly one year, three year, five year, 10 year basis, the CAGR returns in smaller companies tend to be higher. The only thing is, one has to be very careful because, you know, these are smaller companies, not much research is available. Uh, your fundamental analysis has to be proper. Also, your period of investment has to be reasonably long for you to withstand any volatility which might happen because of so many external reasons. Again, we are very lucky. One is we are born in India, which is the grow fastest growing economy in the world. Second is we have so many listed companies and many more coming up again. So I think it's a stock picker's paradise. It's an investor's paradise. You see the number of companies, you know, across sectors, you have 500, 600 companies. We have 6,000 listed companies, 2,500 companies which are traded regularly. And the good thing is that most of these companies are not even researched properly. In fact, when I started my career as a fund management, a uh, fund manager, there was research only available in 50, 70 companies. You know, we were lucky because no one even used to look at balance sheets. I still read 1,200 balance sheets. Now, there are more analysts. You know, we have this uh, Twitter where city where everyone has become an analyst, everyone is putting in their research, but still there is a plethora of companies which are undiscovered where the research is either 
very thin or hardly any there. And I think that makes it very interesting, particularly for analysts and fund managers who are willing to take that extra effort, willing to go deep down, willing to travel, meet companies, to really pick companies which can be the differentiating companies. New companies, new businesses, I always come to the fact that we are very lucky to be born in India at this point of time. So if you look at the global landscape, you know, you look at Russia, it was predominantly oil and gas. If you look at Brazil, it was predominantly commodities. If you look at China, it is predominantly public sector. Even their IT companies or digital companies are now taken over by the government. India is to some extent like US. You know, we have presence across sectors. We have cement, we have steel, we have auto, we have IT, we have pharma, we have banks, across sectors. And there are so many listed companies and many more coming. There are such interesting businesses coming which did not exist. You know, like we have Zomato, which is into delivery. I'm not saying that you should buy it. It does not qualify in our framework. But I'm just giving an example. These are new businesses which did not exist. We have a company which is into launch management. These businesses did not exist. There are numerous other businesses which are coming up. And I think that makes our job very interesting and it also opens up opportunity. At the same time, you have to be careful because a lot of these IPOs have uh, over a period of time not delivered the kind of returns uh, because of uh, the valuations. I think investment in listed space is very different from a PE investment or a venture investment. A PE investment is high risk, high return investment. I think they take a call based on the promoter from a 10 years perspective. A lot of times the business model is not even established. Venture fund is very, very high risk. You spray and pray. What you mean is you invest in 50, 60 companies and pray that one of them might become an Amazon or you know Google or something. From our perspective, we are very fundamental focused. Our view is that four things are working for India. And our whole investment, you know, sort of uh, uh, philosophy is based on what can happen in India from an eight, 10 years perspective. And what are those four things? One is democracy. I think we have seen over the last two, three years in particular with what happened in Russia, what would have possibly happened in, in China, that non-democracies are very volatile countries. And investors across the world have realized that countries which are non-democracies have ended up giving no returns. You know, Russia people lost 100% of their capital. China, 10-year returns in dollar term is zero. So if you invested a million dollar in China in 2013, you're still at million dollars. In India, it has become 200, uh, like a million has become 2.4 million dollars. You know, and I think that is helping India because a lot of foreign investors are now looking at democracies of which India is obviously one of the largest. The second is demographics. Wherever you have young people, obviously consumption will be more. And in India, our median age is right now 29. And even after 20 years, the median age will be less than 35. And I think that very clearly points out that consumption is going to be driven because we are a young economy. What also happens is the kind of consumption changes. So, you know, we were like a trillion dollars after 60 years of independence. After 76 years of independence, we are three and a half trillion dollars. This three and a half trillion dollar was contributed by very basic stuff. So food, basic clothing, because, you know, after independence, our fathers and forefathers only objective was roti kapada and makan. It is only after we move up in our income levels that we start to demand or consume wants. I think the next three and a half, so from three and a half to seven trillion dollar will comprise a lot of want. So, you know, if you look at India, 140 crore people, only 40 crore people have income levels which are more than six lakh rupees at the family level on an annual basis. They can afford some want. The balance 100 crores are struggling to meet their needs, which is roti, kapada and makan. I think this is going to dramatically change. In eight, nine years, we'll have 100 crore people who will have capability of demanding some wants. And that is where the kind of consumption which we are in will change. You know, we have seen one of the most luxurious mall open in BKC on November 1. Almost all the brands are there. I am very sure when I was growing up, the only time we got new shirts was during Diwali. And that also, if you were two, three brothers, sabka shirt same hota tha. Now we have different shirts for morning, different for evening, eth ledger, gym dress, traditional dress, wedding dress. I think 
the consumption pattern from three and a half trillion to seven trillion will change. The need for infrastructure will rise because there will be more cars. The need for ports, airports will rise because you'll have more import exports. You will want to travel more. So I think this three and a half to seven trillion is going to lead to a massive multiplier effect. And I think we are fortunate to have it. And last but not the least, the digital economy. I think what we lack in physical infrastructure has been more than made up by way of digital infrastructure. We are constantly on the phone. We are abreast of everything which is happening. It has made us more smarter, more intelligent, more aware. It has also reduced our ability to not pay taxes. And that's the reason why the tax collections for the government has gone up to 18, 20%, which is also helping the economy. This is very, very important. Market price is equal to EPS into P. Very simple formula. So if the EPS of a company is 30 and the P is 15, the market price is 450. P is very different. EPS you can analyze. You can put on spreadsheet. You know, the eighth wonder of the world is spreadsheet. You can, uh, you know, forecast even 30, 40 years. But P is the market perception. And market perception or the P will determine whether the stock will give you average return or non-average returns. And I think this is what we have to focus on. So what happens is when a company performs consistently, when the profit growth is very consistent, your P also moves up. And that is how you create a multi-bagger. You know, it's been a great time for stock pickers. If you actually see the number of companies which have given you more than 100% return, over three years, 229 companies have given you more than 100% return over three years. And I think if you keep the basics in control, if you keep your philosophy very stable, at least from our perspective, if you believe in fundamentals and you also believe in the concept of buying at a good price or stocks which according to you are undervalued, I think it's a sure shot recipe of creating returns. Thank you.